Today I'm going to make clone commando armor. For this build, I used EVA foam, craft foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. I'm gonna start with the knees, because they're pretty easy. They're just four pieces glued together. I thought I was gonna have to put in all the support underneath to get them to hold their shape, but no. I got away with it. I cut the curved pieces at an angle so that the knee protector would flare out at the sides and therefore adhere to the shape of the knee rather than sit on top of it. Now for the shin guards. I also figured those out on cardboard first. Every piece is figured out on cardboard first. See, each armor segment is kind of its own prop build in and of itself, which is why this video took so long. So each piece has to be patterned out from scratch. Okay, now this is one side of one shin guard. To get the other side, I flipped the original template and tried traced it again. I'm making them with a bite cut out of the back. This is where the calf will go. As the knife blade wears out, I'll sometimes get tears in the edge of each piece. This won't make for a very good gluing surface, so I sanded away those problem areas on my belt sander. If you do this a lot, if you build out of foam a lot, I'd seriously invest in a belt sander. I use it all the time. Now that that's out of the way, I can heat form. I go longer on the inside because if I accidentally scorch it, no one's gonna see it. I always wanna emphasize how hot the heat gun gets. Once it was heated up, I shaped it on a hard rounded surface. After a few minutes of this, I stuck it in a tube to cool. When I had finished shaping both sides, I glued them together. So when I built the standard clone trooper armor, I used socks for the calf because those shin guards are so narrow that you can't actually fit your foot through without busting a seam if it were all one solid piece. So the idea was the sock is stretchy, it can flex, and you don't destroy your work just putting it on. I don't actually have to do that here because the clone commando armor is bulkier by design. I just use a slightly thinner foam. When cut out, it should look like a fish. Fish that likes to eat. Don't listen to them, you're beautiful. You're beautiful beautiful aquatic life form or a fast pac-man i don't need what are shapes cut shapes out of foam that's how those are the instructions for all all of the builds except the ones i made out of wood i'm using white eva foam so that i don't have to paint most of the time commitment involved in these projects is waiting for layers of paint to dry so when i can i like to build out a material that matches the final color that gap at the top is intentional by the way it's for the knee then I made the centerpiece, which only has a slight curve to it and is not quite rectangular because that would make my life too easy. And then I lightly heat formed it with the heat gun. When I was happy with the shapes, I super glued them together. Because foam is an insulator, it will temporarily get very hot. So if you do this, be very careful because you, you can get like tiny but very painful burns. Now for the thigh armor. This piece is too big to fit through a printer. So on the template, I broke it up into smaller pieces. This is how they fit together. That's the only part of the template that I've gotten questions, so I figured I'd just get a clean shot of it, you know? All right, let's get to it. As I'm moving up the body, I'm switching to four millimeter foam because there's gonna be a lot of layered detail towards the middle, and that's gonna look super weird if I'm using the 3 8 inch floor mat foam. You can get this stuff at craft stores, by the way. The thinner stuff is admittedly easier to heat form, but that also makes it easier to burn, so watch out. Oh, I made the other leg by reversing the template, by the way. I heat formed and shaped those pieces. Then I closed up the seams with super glue. Then I cut a new seam in front. I, I know that seems counterintuitive, but I need to add an edge in the front there. And this foam is just a little bit too thin to use the same back cutout technique that I did on the back of the shin guard. I cut a triangle to mesh with the knee plate and glued that into the thigh. I also added a strip of foam above it to create the crease. When both were complete, I moved up the armor. The seat and cod piece are basically the same as the classic stormtrooper, but just a little more angular. And the utility belt is actually combined with these pieces. He actually doesn't have a lot of utilities, I guess because they go in the backpack. So I built those belt pieces that conveniently go on the side so I can use them to connect the front and back plates. I made the cod piece out of two halves and then heat formed them to glue them together. Then I added panels. Some of them were just drawn on with a marker. You know, not everything has to be super complicated. To create even more depth, I cut a notch above it. Since I already heat formed it into a curved shape, uh, I can't actually easily cut into it without damaging it, so I used a concrete form tube as a curved cutting mat. Then I made a belly plate out of roll foam. The armor segments nestled together, sort of like a lobster. Is that relatable? I made an identical piece for the next segment and laid one on top of the other. Then I added smaller segments on top of that. I know it's not accurate, but I added buttons to the ones on the side. I just thought it looked cool. Now for the pecs. I used one of my old armor templates for that just because it 
happen to match. Generally, I make my templates in halves so that they can be folded over and each side will come out symmetrical. I cut that out and because those were very long cuts, my blade dulled out a bit at the end and tore up the foam on a few of the seams. Now that's not really a huge issue because that's gonna be out of sight when you're wearing it, but it's one of those nitpicky things and the, the belt sander is right there. So I smoothed out that edge on the sander. Once I was finished sanding, I heat formed that piece as well. This is gonna take longer because the piece is so much larger, but it's no big deal. We're talking about minutes here. It's no big deal. For the cool down process, I put it in a concrete form tube. It cooled pretty quick, but it's still kind of two dimensional. The chest piece is basically just a platform that the pecs sit on top of. So now that it's fully heat formed, I'm gonna set it aside and do the pecs separately. I cut those out of scrap foam because I'm running out of full sheets and I got one left to get the back blade. Can't, can't afford to mess it up. Then I heat form them, place them in a bowl until they remained rounded. Then I connected them using a strip of four millimeter foam in between them. Then I glued them on top of the chest plate and added all the geometric shapes underneath so that they would sit right. And when they were in, I puttied those seams. This is very similar to the standard clone trooper armor. In fact, I contemplated just sticking panels on top of my already existing clone trooper armor just to save time, but I don't like my clone trooper armor. I don't, I don't wanna wreck it. So I just made a new one. I mean, I have the patterns. Why, you know, how much time are you really saving? An afternoon? But yeah, it's the same as the standard clone trooper armor, except there's a center plate and the neck hole is wider. It's actually more comfortable. Like seriously, this is like wearing a down jacket. So I just turned off my furnace for a day and it was, just, it was still wildly uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable as it could have been. The detail inside the raised box portion on the back isn't necessary because it'll be covered up eventually but I left it in there for reference. Then I used the extended ends of the center plate as straps. Now for the back plate. I made that essentially the same way as the front base plate, literally all the same steps. It's a different physical shape, but it's, it's very similar. Although I use weights this time to, to get the heat form to hold its shape, just because it's supposed to be a little bit flatter than the front piece. While it cooled, I made the box that rests on top of it. I started with the walls. It's less symmetrical than the original. The side walls are elongated at the bottom, creating this cavity underneath. The edges are angled so that the whole thing will be, well, angled inward. I cut the long sides at a slightly slanted angle so that it would sit correctly on the now curved back plate. Then I glued them together. Next, I cut a panel to close it up. I glued it into the back box. Then I used the extended ends of the center plate as straps to go over the shoulders, connecting the front and back pieces. I glued actual buckles to the sides of the armor segments. Whenever I use hot glue, I like to weight down the pieces afterwards with machinist blocks to hold them in place and to draw out the heat, thus allowing the glue to dry faster. After that, I got to work on the arms. I started with the shoulder pauldrons because those will have to connect to the chest pieces. This is made up of one solid piece with details built up on top of it. I started with a piece of 3 8 inch EVA foam, floor mat foam, cut it out, heat formed it, stuck it in a tube to cool. While it's cooling, I worked on the outer details. I'm making them out of two millimeter black craft foam and four millimeter white foam. I glued those on and then repeated the process for the other shoulder. Moving down the arm now, I made the next segment. The base of this is the same as the clone trooper armor. It just has an extra detail layer on top of it. So once it was cut out and heat formed, I got to work on the details. It's all one piece, and when it's wrapped around the outside, the cutouts create depth. Now down to the elbow. There's a section that meshes with the notch in the piece I just made. It's bigger, but somehow less complicated than the one I made for the regular clone armor. I don't know how I managed that. It's comprised of just three pieces folded and glued over one another. Next, I made the forearmer, forearm armor, banana -nah. They're bulkier than the standard issue clone trooper armor, or even the original stormtrooper armor. So I made an entirely new pattern for them with lots of sharp angles. Kind of remind me of Batman gauntlets. I layered all the armor plates. I smoothed it out even more on the belt sander. For the wrist, I used leftover puzzle strips from the floor mats with the puzzle pieces cut off. Usually you have to mirror the patterns to get the opposite limb. But in this case, the right and left wrist guards are identical. Then I puttied the seams. And I repeated those steps to make the other arm. 
Now for the gloves. So I have multiple suits of armor at this point. So rather than gluing the armor plate directly onto the glove, I'm gonna sew some Velcro on there so that I can use the same pair of gloves and just swap out the armor plates. Now about the helmet, there are so many variations in the helmet. I've done dozens at this point. But if you're watching this video, I assume you're looking for the Commando Trooper variant of the Stormtrooper helmet. So I'll just real quick show you what's different. And if you're still confused, then you can check out any of my past trooper builds. Links below and at the end of the video. So it's very similar to the clone trooper helmet. Here are the differences. First, there's this little brim above the visor. Made that out of thin foam. Then I made the cheek indents, kind of like a man in a helmet. There was occasional patchwork. Then the chin connector that was two layers deep. That's going to get covered up, so I just used regular floor mat foam for that. I built up the front of the chin with white foam. Then I used sections cut from a foam cylinder for the details. And that's about it for the front. So I flipped it over and built up the back of the helmet with extra panels. I smoothed out some of the rough parts with putty. Now for the visor. Arguably, this is the most iconic detail the costume so I gotta get it just right. I'll be making it out of lighting gel. This is a film and theater tech item but I'm sure you can find it online. In fact now that I think about it I usually do black tinted visors out of office organizer envelopes and they come in multicolored packs. I actually have a blue one it's just I, I'm using it for its intended purpose as an office organizer. There's actually a lot of paperwork behind the scenes that go into making these videos. It's just like I just don't film it because it's it, it's not interesting. So I cut that out and taped it inside the helmet. The lighting effect is achieved through an LED headlamp with wax paper wrapped over it for diffusion, spreading the light around so that you don't see the individual LEDs. I finished up the helmet by drawing on more panel lines with marker. Now for some of the accessories, let's get to work on that. I started with the backpack, also one of the signature features of this costume. It's designed to plug into the back plate, so the internal structural parts that aren't going to be seen. I just made out of gray foam. It's a lot easier to get a hold of than the white foam. I actually ran out of white foam floor mats while making this, so I used light gray for the outer details. Yeah, support me on Patreon because the price of foam floor mats has increased. Thanks, Somali pirates. Oh, is that political? Will the algorithm allow it? Let's find out. Next, I cut a hole in the backpack for the control panel. The panel covering was made out of craft foam that I also cut holes in, although more strategically this time. I put diffusion paper on the back to spread the light. Here's a test with one of my set lights. I do not know why I didn't think of this at the time, but I could have just put more colored gels in the back of here and gone that route, but instead I used red and blue LEDs. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess, sure, whatever. It's the same outcome. Just I feel like it would have been less work, you know? Then I made the compartments on the bottom. They're annoyingly geometric. Like they're not just boxes, but they're also not just monopoly houses. They're, they're offset just to irritate me. I put them together and then place them inside the backpack. Now for the blaster. Shh, don't tell the algorithm. I for one am perfectly willing to create content that abides by the ad revenue policies outlined by our robot overlords. I swear this platform's becoming a Soviet dystopia. Oh no, she heard me. Support me on Patreon so that I can build blasters again. Anyway, Anyway, there are a lot of variants of this blaster. Just gonna do the basic one, but if you're more into the variants, then, you know, if, if you wanna do a variant and you've gotten this far in the build, you should be able to figure it out from what I've already shown you. It's just layers of foam. You know, this is not rocket science. He said as he attached a rocket launcher. There's a module underneath the blaster that's basically the shape of a big pencil. So I made that out of foam. And all the other details are hole punch offcuts. Because this is a machine, you don't need to fill in the seams, but I didn't like the one on the handle, so I filled that in with putty and painted over it. And then I attached each of the individual parts together with backpack straps and buckles. It's a good idea to wear black underneath just because it'll show at the joints. And I picked up some costume boots for the feet. And then I suited up. And that's it. That's how to make clone commando trooper armor. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons. These videos just wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So if you enjoy these builds, want to see more of them, and want your build request to carry a bit more weight, then think about heading on over to the Patreon page, where you can enjoy ad-free early uploads. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving the video quality and shop equipment, as well as allowing me to put together bigger and more exciting projects for you on the channel. All right, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit 
hit the bell icon to be notified of the future uploads because it's kind of at a totally random schedule. And let me know what other props you'd like to see me make in comments down below. Thanks again, happy crafting, see you later.